All right, it's the man, the myth, the legend, the shy up in the top lane. Uh, they're picking up Aatrox as a counter pick here, uh, trying to get on top of Cassante. Cassante is going to have a strong uh, early first five levels, but after that, Aatrox will be able to take it over. We'll see if Carzy, uh, sorry, if uh, Chasey is able to get one of those all out secluded plays. Uh, we're going to see Poppy, Maokai, Oriana banned, matched by Jarvan, Azir, and Zaya. Uh, we talked about this. If Zaya basically is a must ban on the red side, <clears throat> and if Zaya or Rakan is gone, there's no prio to, to need the other piece, right? You don't need both pieces, but keeping them together is so, so important. Uh, Vi, first pick, very, very surprising to me. I don't think that she belongs that high on the priority list. Ash, however, does. I'm glad that we're seeing another Ash. This is a big deal up in the bot lane. We've got Ash Alistar to fight against Callista Renata. So you actually have the individual highest stat champions. Uh, for their role here, Alistar and Al Ash will see if they go for a flash engage at level one. This is something you can do. You can go Q flash or Alistar to get on top of them, and then Ash procs her extra frozen arrows, whatever it's called, the Q Arctic assault. Maybe no, that sounds like a funny ability. But you just go in, you go ham. However, that being said, it's against Callista Renata, who have shared on hit effects that affect their teammates. So as long as they each poke the same player or the same minion or whatever it is, you're going to get that source of bonus damage. Uh, that's going to be a huge part of the kit. So that will be whether or not we can swing that matchup will be due to that. Alistar is going to try to soak that up while Ash can just charge up and rip into see whether or not we get that early level one. Ari being taken. I think Ari is way past, way past her prime. Uh, Silas not going to have the best targets here. Can actually grab the, the black spear. It'll be interesting to see who they put that on. Probably on Alistar. Um, but uh, there's some reasons to, to want Vi or Cassante or even Ash, you know, just as an ability to save Ash. But most likely they're going to go for synergies so that you have one of these dives has a free way out or an extra way in. Uh, front to back, we're going to see some kiting from the side, some disengage here from Renata. Very hard to get into this team right here. Very easy for them to just wallop you if you try to dive in and you don't have enough. So a tricky composition to play, but I do love the Ash pick. I love the Alistar. Uh, it's going to be fun to see whether or not Mad Lions is able to pick themselves up after losing to NRG. So without any further discussion, let's get to the game. All right, it's game one, Weebu Gaming versus Mad Lions. We had a red team. Again, we got a 10th pick Aatrox into Cassante. This is something that people, uh, there's been some deliberation about it. Aatrox, you feel very comfortable in that like level seven to ten window and especially once you get after that because you can just heal up through it but this will be Cassante dominated for the first five levels it's up to him to just get inside as soon as you see q1 from aatrox you have to jump on on the inside and then you respond to q3 with w uh, as far as other setups silas vi i would have preferred to see something like bonnie to go with all these melees but instead we end up with vi vi i think just a little bit too far down on the tier list for me not a big fan of this champion, yeah, she did get a little bit of love right before the tournament start, but she's still weaker than she was last year, and I really don't want to see her prioritized, especially not blue one, right? Blue one, kind of a nod to, hey, we're, we're willing to try to go for counter picks all over the place, so we'll just go with a steady engage uh, champion from the jungle and then play it by ear from there, but that means that you don't, that's like the non-plan plan, and I don't think that's a good plan going into draft. Anyways, we're going to see Silas versus Ari. Our, uh, Silas is going to be trading his hit point pool for resources here and trying to get a W off in these prolonged trades. He is the first strike build, which means we're going to see more focus on you. And almost definitely see an Everfrost. All right, we see a little bit of the poke here from Karzi. I'll let you know once we see whether or not she has Q or W. Uh, look, it's got to be W because I cast it. <clears throat> this is a this is a losing approach for Ash to take advantage of this champion's kit. You need to go Q early, and you just basically all in right off the bat. Uh, you're, it's it's a miss, and you're going to get beat up if you play passively. And when you get the W at level one, you're basically stuck only casting once. What is it? Every sixteen seconds. Uh, so you completely lose track of the wave. And there's no stacking it. So I love what Crisp and, and Light are doing here. Getting some poke. And boom, you see what happens. When both champions hit and the on-hit passives proc from Renata and from Callista, you see that huge chunk of damage coming out uh, already up against the back foot. And this is not how you want to play Ash. Ash needs to be played aggressively. You need to stay on top of them. You need to keep your Q stacked. 
ready to pop it and ready to fight. Now, interesting, we've got four camp, awkward four camp here from Vi. Does she just opt herself into a, into a path that puts her at level two after three camps? She's forced to take Krugs, meaning Rel was able to go and invade Raptors. Uh, yes, they had some amount of information, but now Rel's going to slide back into her jungle and very easily pick up a CS lead. Vi's going to be forced to go after Gromp into Top Scuttle, probably actually skipping the Gromp. They're even going to see her right now on this ward, which means that bot lane can play with impunity. Uh, Rel is also in the vicinity, and Ari is the second one to recall here, so you might actually see her push and look to hover for this play. It's a little bit early for them to want to give up any amount of XP. We'll see whether or not she just tries to hold herself onto this. Vi is actually going straight to the Scuttle. Uh, Aatrox will have to be a very careful at this moment. He knows that Vi was seen crossing this way and Rel stayed over here. She's going to go for this potential dive. 3v2 or maybe even help out the Silas. I don't like the way that Weibo is playing this portion right here where they're still auto attacking. Like you could have let this wave come out and like then you're stuck in this horrendous position, right? Vi is nowhere near. She's actually on the full other side of the map. They opt to go for the push to get themselves level four. A little bit early on uh, Hillisang trying to go for the disengage. You get a couple stuns. We see the early proc. Oh, not going to keep him alive, but it's still one for two. Uh, very, very worth. And this is going to be Karzi missing out on tons of resources. See how they're still level three. That was a Callista level four at the start of that and going to get bigger. She's going to have a tremendous shop for herself. Leading off, we've got Refillable plus Longsword. This is someone who wants to dominate the lane early Berserker Greaves, which we'll always see on Callista. Try to take advantage of this extra move speed and attack speed to kite around. Here we go, checking out the play. The benefits to going this mo this method is that you get to be proactive. You see right here, that's a mistake by Hill. You actually want to wait till the aggro hits before you go for any more. I love that the ignite comes out nice and early so that the uh, cleanse has to be used early. That means that the stun is able to get the follow-up. As far as he potentially could have flashed out to dodge the rel stun and maybe could have made an outplay from there. But this is feeling pretty checkmatey right here. Uh, Item leads already. We have a Ruby Crystal and a Longsword lead from the bot laners, plus they have all that kill threat. But you do have to be careful about the Alistar Flash all in. Uh, here, they should try to answer this. They cannot keep playing this passively. This is something you cannot do with this lane. You have to play super aggressively. Playing back and letting yourself get chunked by half your HP before anything even starts is completely losing. Uh, and you see how, how they handle this. Oh my goodness. Like just rampaging through Hillion on Alistar. That bot lane should be enough to help them carry the game now. We're already looking at almost a 2k advantage. They're going to give up some of their tempo to go for Dragon. But Callista's getting some time to herself in the bot lane. Already has a shutdown available. Uh, everything should be pointed towards her. Expect to see a Silas come down there with some sort of engaging ult. Either Ari's or Rel's. And... And then Vi coming down and point clicking the ultimate onto Callista. That's going to be Mad Lion's singular focus. If you're Weeboo Gaming, you're just trying to stymie that in whatever way you can. All right, Niski using their resources to get the fast push here. We see uh, Lucid Boots and Dark Seal actually from Ari. So that actually very interesting. Opting to go with this sequence of items rather than building just a lost chapter, saying that they want the extra move speed, they want to kite away, make sure that there's no counterplay from the Silas, not even making it about mana, just saying, hey, nope, we're going to be fine. We're going to be able to crash these waves anyways. Dark. The uh, Doran's Ring is more than enough mana to get us through to the lost chapter phase. Uh, but... Silas, you know, uses that ultimate, try to create a little pressure. This is something you have to do in those matchups where you have a little bit of a loss at any point. You have to just use your resources, trade aggressively, and then find a recall for yourself or call your jungler over. Lost chapters coming online. We actually see a pretty bad back from Ari. Spending eight. Early recurve bow. We're going to see... The Blade of the Rune King from Callista, so meant to be a one-item spike. Sometimes we see like the Immortal Shield Bow, Rage Blade type builds. 
uh, Chasey getting completely gapped here. This is the end of of Asante's chance for playing from ahead. From this point on, Aatrox is going to take over that matchup and just heal tank him. Uh, this is what I don't like. Vi, Vi coming up here at level 6, like your chances of killing Aatrox are slim to none. Even if you were to get the jump there, it's so difficult to kill Aatrox from full health with ultimate available, able to fight back. Like the chances that you actually just lose a 1v2 are still so high compared to going to the bot lane where you have the be all and end all. Now, that being said, we talk about game theory optimal a lot where we're gonna have some sort of split where like, this is the best idea, this is the second best idea, and this is whatever is good against both of those or the defenses to both of those. So if they're making an adaptation and saying, hey, we want to not be predictable, uh, and go for it, but sometimes not always the, the best approach at the beginning of a best of series. You normally want to play the, your best card and just say, hey, is this good enough? And, and then you prove, you make the other team adapt to you and say, hey, can you answer what we're just best at? Go from there. Uh, flashes and multiple ult ultimates being used just to fight Rel and not even get this kill. No, they do get it. Silas over the wall. Well played by Hilly to be there, but all those resources being used means that Callista is completely unchecked in this lane. Now, something that you can do, so talking about the different options, whether or not you're throwing Vial here or not, if you're not throwing it, they are correctly moving over. You see how Ash is in there and Alistar is over? Everybody's coming over to join the party. The idea is GTFO, don't touch the Callista. She is a super demon right now. Uh, let's make plays everywhere else. So I absolutely love this from Hillisang. Coming over back-to-back -back ganks on mid getting some pressure back for themselves. And really what you're doing is you're negating Callista and Renata because Renata's never going to feel comfortable enough to leave the Callista alone. So you're basically trying to play 5v3 out on the map and try to win that 5v3 as hard as you can, knowing that Callista is likely to stay in her lane and that Renata is likely to stay down there as well. If you can make enough plays where maybe Renata starts thinking, oh shoot, I, best, I better go... Uh, protect against some plays. For example, let's say if you just like head fake over here with Alistar, but then your Vi goes to bot lane, right? And then suddenly Renata's like, oh shoot, I need to go and get ready for disengage here. And actually it's the Vi diving Callista. That is a sequence of plays that they might be able to make for themselves. We'll see whether or not they're able to hook this for themselves. Xiaohu just not getting the memo about the arrow. Now, Vi has ultimate, yeah. All right, so that's a mistake, by the way. That is something you never want to flash R. You want to R flash. Because in that moment, you flash, they flash at the exact same moment, your R never gets to target. But if you have your R targeted, then you flash, you immediately cast it. There is no frames, not even the, the amount of time it takes to press one button on a keyboard to be able to get away. Let's see, they're going to try to dogpile onto this R. A good chain CC, beautiful, cleanly done. Dashing in using Everfrost plus the knockup on E2 to continue the fight. So they are doing a fantastic job moving over, just bringing the strength away from Callista. Uh, it does mean that Ash does go down significantly, right? You're, you're seeing an approaching 30 CS difference right here, plus five plates. So basically, if you're Callista, now, now that all the eggs are in your basket, You're going to try to hard carry, take as many risks as possible because now you have significantly more gold than you normally would in a game. You've been completely uncontested. The game moved away from you, so it's on you now to carry. And really like giga carry, right? Everyone's been moving away. You already have three kills now and that whole turret. You're working on another turret. Uh, you're gonna see that while they're this big that they're not gonna rotate yet, right? It's too early. Even though plates are available, and yes, they could go for this, Callista wants to be in that nice long lane so she can really use her kit. Nice job by Niski, actually. Staying up in front, good pathing here. Waits till the Ari's kind of stuck, but good answer. No, not enough. Well played by Niski. Fairly smooth to stay ahead. I'm surprised that he was that much faster than Ari. Or Q into R, you catch them. She never gets to cast the second half of of the ultimate. I don't know what Hilly thought he was doing here. 
much much better i mean obviously you're just stuck there under turret you're going to die once that turret goes down he's trying to use his ultimate to peel off Callista can easily just wait for it to go down and then pop it anyways uh what you'd like to do is wait for the aggro to start and as soon as they start the aggro find a way to headbutt the Callista away uh or whoever takes the aggro you try to lock stun lock them That was actually dodgeable there at the end. The rest of the spells were on cooldown. She, Zhao Hu could have seen that and dodged inside. But either way, despite Ari being the target here for Mad, you're, you're going to see this amount of gold just manifest itself into a huge lead. You also have a 30 CS gap here on Aatrox. So the Shy showing that they are clearly experienced in this matchup and happy to take the Aatrox normally I mean we do see against even players we see a lot of Hisante taking over that matchup with early pressure a lot of it has to do with jungle proximity and who's nearby what kind of risks you can take but you can see how Aatrox just completely takes over the matchup also kind of interesting to see Rush is the gore drinker uh even though he had no need to to use gore drinker to get all of that sustain it does help with all the AoE and the push uh, getting all that extra healing. I generally prefer to see plated steel caps into this combination, especially since you're going to need them anyways. But, uh, and that would negate, you know, having that extra source of health would or resistances would make it a lot harder for Vi to get on top of you. But he's choosing to say, hey, but dealing extra damage and getting the stuff from the sweet spots is going to be tough. Uh, so we'll see whether or not, if, uh, if you want to do this again in game two, seeing that this is the plan, that he's not going to go for those early, early plated steel caps even if you have this combination that means you shouldn't have to worry about damage types in the top if you go for Cassante again and let them pick aatrox go for another engage jungler and see if you can take advantage of the fact that he is skipping defensive itemization here uh you know some of it amount of, of confidence some is hubris basically when when it's uh confidence gone wrong that's when it's hubris right Silas jumping up. We see Arya. Good. I like the continued aggression here. Good flashes away. Light is going to be able to rip this team fight apart as long as he can stay away from Alistar. Uh, stepping back. Now, actually, Ash doing enough damage. Silas dealing some on the backside. They get that fat shutdown, and they're going to be able to be able to lock up Aatrox. Suddenly, Mad Lions takes a 9-4 lead. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually amount to much of a gold lead because of how much they've given into the pocket of Callista. Now, everyone's going for recalls, meaning that they want to go back out. This is normally how you snowball leads. After big kills like this, you go back and you shop and then you match them. The problem is that their 9-4 to four is not actually amounting to a gold lead. So this off of this recall, I much rather would have seen them go for more tempo plays, try to get more resources off the map, and then go for the recall, play for the syncopation, and actually try to get stronger than the enemies because right now they're going to be coming back onto the map potentially thinking that they're stronger but they're not actually stronger here ash i don't like that you're fishing right there you guys are face checking both teams are face checking into the dragon pit uh, looking at the box in box by the way uh, ash fishing with the ultimate not able to get it and with uh less than 90 seconds on the dragon you know what the, the ult's going to come back up that's actually perfect use um, i take that back that is that is a plus for ash Fishing right there with 90 seconds before so you can have the next one come up. A plus. If you don't hit, no big deal. What that can mean is Weibo can try to fight for Pryo in the river a little bit more aggressively, knowing that Ash doesn't have that cooldown. They will be tracking that. They will know when it's back up. We do have Kraken Slayer, uh, most likely going to be into Trinity Force <clears throat> from the Ash. That is the be all end all build for this champion Triforce or Bust. Big problem, of course, is going to be this versus this. 20 CS in the hole here. Is Aatrox going to be able to carry this fight? Now, completed items across the board. Boots and an item, boots and an item, boots and two items. This Silas is enormous. Everyone else playing around with boots and an item. So we actually could say that Mad Lions should be feeling very strong going into this fight. Gold is in the right place. They've got two items on Silas without giving up a discrepancy anywhere else. Uh, Callista, the only other place where you might argue that you have a lead, and that will just get outscaled by the Ash. 
So it'll be interesting to see whether Mad Lions decides to go for this, whether or not they say, hey, I'm just going to be fine to uh, play for scaling, or I want to go for Silas right now. And also, like, wh whose ultimate are you going to take as Silas? Right? Are you flying around the fight with, with Ari? Are you trying to dive into the middle of them and vacuum them in with Rel? Uh, probably Renata's is going to be the most impactful on most hit fights, but on an Infernal map, there's actually way more open space, making the, the Renata ult much, much worse. We never actually caught, caught wind of who she used the Black Spear on either. So it uh, could be interesting to see these ad adaptations. Look at the formation of the fight. The Shy looking to step to the outside. Niski actually popping the thing. There we go. It's, it's the Renata Smoke. Looks like a Nami ult. They go back and forth. Berserk is in, but it's only a level one spell. They can chain CC. Chasey takes a significant amount of damage. Hilly's going to int for the team. Chase is on Ari stepping forward. Oh, Karzi, what are you doing? Oh, no. Missed steps going around there, potentially hitting both sides. That happens if you click here, then click here. You end up jumping around that wall. Should have been able to get by with less casualty than that. Surprised it exploded that much, right? They found a good angle, stepped back. Renata was able to answer ult for ult. We'll see whether or not we get an R flash from Renata this game. That is one of the best spells in the game to uh, maneuver with your own spells. Boom, big difference here, right? F five people getting hit. And Chasey getting chain CC'd, never able to get anything else, ends up uh, moving back. So you see the difference. When they hit it, they've got the chain CC ready. The thing is, that was all of their abilities being used onto Cassante, and Cassante survived. So frankly, that was an opportunity for Mad to go in. Enough cooldowns were... Uh, available to them where they could have taken an advantage in the fight. Yes, to not go for that. So Renata, yeah, the flash, right? So when you're going on that spell, you're casting your spell from here. It's going to go off in this angle. If you cast it and then flash, right, you can move it. But the most common play is anytime that you want to cast it, you'd rather just cast it and have it start right here. That takes about one and a half seconds out of the travel time to have it start from this position. Makes it go a little bit deeper as well. Uh, that is the way that you can use this fight around the pits to really surprise them with how quickly it's coming in. We'll see whether or not they go for that. That tends to be the play when you're getting a big flank from this guy, right? So you see front to back, let's say Rel engages, sees a big vacuum, and then you want Renata to follow up on that right away or you want Renata to set up Rel. They're going to try to work with each other here. One's going to go into the other. Both people will be willing to use their flashes at the same moment. They're going to try to line that up with Aatrox smashing that anvil down uh, onto, or smashing the hammer down onto the anvil. Ari still 0 3 2. I'm going to be playing on scraps for items here compared to Silas. Silas actually on 10 stacks darts, Dark Seal. I, don't, I doubt they're going to go with Magi's. Magi's has that ad added bonus where you're going to get that extra 10 AP just from having this Everfrost here as well. So actually gives a ton ton of stats if you're looking to win the next fight that is your single best use of 1250 gold we'll see if they go for that or if they say no it's too risky frankly i like that buy a lot because even when it goes wrong you can still sell for 980 and you're going to get most of that back only spending that 270 of a rental price um yeah he doesn't go for it he ends up going for double double needless large rod says he's going for the rabidons here doesn't want to go for this spike not sure how I feel about it. You're obviously only 1100 away from that spike, but leaving power on the table right now could be a problem, but you will get that back on your next recall and get it back in spades. All right, we're setting up for the pits. Baron is available. You see the line of wards mid prio into river prio. See how they're setting up this trapezoid of vision for themselves. Uh, the answer is going to come from Mad in the form of split pushes. El Yoya face checking. What are you doing? You can't face check this. Okay. Just going blindly into the fog, into the maw of madness. Uh, means that they're going to have a significant loss right here. Not enough abilities were used 
Ash Arrow being cast, but the ward sees them means that they don't have enough. They're not able to hit Aatrox blind. He escapes. That means there's very few abilities left to try to take this. Chasey should get into the middle of this fight. I want to see a big W across everybody. They do bundle up all four people, but Alistar is a little bit late. Almost so close. They do get everyone out of the pit, but Ari still ends up taking it. So close on this fight. Oh my goodness. Mad's going to feel like they left so much on the table here. Even with the early death, almost taking that for themselves. You see all four people bundling in the back of the pit. And the counterplay to that is like, okay, I'll hold all my abilities. As Cassante, I'm going to step my way in. So we see this right here, complete miss. Perhaps thinking that he's a little bit stronger, but you can't, like, you have to wait for Cassante to get a little bit closer, get some idea of where the vision is, where they are. You know where you don't have vision, so you have to play around that. Uh, also, you can use the Hawkshot from Ash to get an idea. But they know that Silas is not on the map, right? So if a fight were to break out, they know they're much, much stronger to go for the engage. That's why they're able to go for this up front. However, it is Flash and Ult being used from Weiwei. We're not going to have that big Renata play. Now look at this spot right here. We saw the teleport come in from Silas. They get the Shy down to half health, and he's got no more ultimate. So we're talking about the rest of this fight. Rel no ultimate. Aatrox no ultimate. Cassante is going to be exceptionally strong. This play needs to be ready for a flash follow-up from Alistar because Cassante is going to shove them all against this wall. Niski should be able to get a four-man Everfrost in this avenue plus a four-man Q1, Q2. Uh, he does not need to dive in, although he could to try to go for the maximum amount of extra damage. If done properly, they are all dying here. The big problem is that uh, Ash's arrow has already been used. That is a tool that they're missing for it. So when we press play, see how they go forward. All right, you see how Cassante pushes them all forward, but Renata, all right, Renata, that's what, what it was. Just that small amount. It's still a pre-11, a pre-11, um, Ultimate from Renata, which means it doesn't hold people much, but it's enough to make Niski step back and to make Hilly step back. That's what keeps everyone alive. So that's a game-saving uh, ultimate right here from Renata. This is one of the best abilities in the entire game against these pits, uh, because if you get the enemy team fighting themselves, then you can actually turn these fights. Aatrox able to hit Q3. Now everyone's diving in. They're taking a little bit of this AoE damage. You see how not enough damage was dealt up front? Uh, but then also Callista able to pull one out. So Callista jumps out on her own, uh, able to pull out the Renata as well. Means they're able to reposition for these fights. They dive back in. They try to get something back. And actually, they do get one kill to keep her alive, or I should say the shutdown <clears throat> takedown, which is able to keep Callista alive. But very interesting fight. That ult by Renata saving the day. If Mad were able to dodge that and put some priority on like, all right, hey, I understand what we're doing. We're going to bottle you up and then it's going to be like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, but they end up getting a little bit too tight on their formation as they go in. And Renata is able to peel the team off and survive the fight. Yahoo getting blasted by Silas. Dude, Niski on a rampage this game. Has that Rabidons. Tons and tons and tons of ability power here. Probably around 550. So we're going to get single target isolation kills on Callista or Ari if you find them. Can probably deal about 60% of, of Aatrox's pool, but it's just going to be enough to pop the Steric Gauge. Plus we have a little bit of resistances being built. I suppose that the Merc Treads answers us why he didn't go with plated steel caps earlier because he intended on buying this item all along. Uh, perhaps. I mean, it, it's only fixing one. The chain stun on Alistar is obviously very good against Ash. And you do have the Everfrost and, and uh, initiation from Silas, but most of the rest of the spells are knock ups. We'll see what kind of value, but it should be enough, right? And importantly, it's enough to not die to the all-in. Now, Hex Drinker is off the table because Steric Gauge is in inventory. We see that Rel has the Anathemas. This is something I love to see when the enemy team has one super fed carry. Oh, putting the Zhonyas out. You did not use that Zhonyas. That just got you killed, Niski. Does survive long enough, but the Zonias was not a mandatory play, so a little bit of a button mash there. It is really good tempo by Mad Lions. They're using the pony up in the top lane. 
pace the enemy team, make them all come chase over here while you go and attack the base. Fortunately, they're not able to get the inhibitor, so that is a big win for Weibo. Uh, they're able to get a significant chunk of gold back for themselves, a uh, 1,000 gold on the shutdown there. And now they're going to look to fight to set up for this. Look at Niski's position of this spot. Is confident that it is not seen right here. Everfrost Q combo, boom. You have the Q dude to pop while they're rooted. First strike dealing all that extra damage. So Niski not even going to come out poor from that because has the extra kill available. Right there, right? That was a perfect dash. Was able to get the knock. You know, could have continued moving backwards. Maybe get the other team to spend a little bit more of their resources. Would have actually bought the team five seconds. A little bit of a meme, but uh, buying them five seconds would have gotten the inhibitor killed for bad lions. So, what is Weibo going to do on the back of this? Good proactive play. Five people moving quickly. See the ward line that they drop? Very shallow. All right, but it's enough to protect them to make sure that they're not being flanked on the backside. They move in together and they're putting a lot of pressure in. Now, this is a very dangerous territory for them. Uh, be, playing around these corridors there, they might be feeling very confident, saying, hey, we've got Renata, we've got Rel. Very happy to play in these small corridors, even Ari. But Cassante, you know, can be very strong. These front to backs could be very nice for himself. <sighs> Second item, Thornmail here from. Dante very much leaning into this Aatrox matchup and a bit into this one, right? It's going to negate some of the Blade of the Rune King power. Early Wits End here from Light on Callista means she's going to be very comfortable just dealing damage throughout this entire fight. On hits, synergies are all in place. This is going to be probably the end of the offensive itemization. You're probably going to see Guardian Angel and Immortal Shield Bow picked up next, or, or maybe Bloodthirster to go for that extra damage. Now, big pockets of vision. Who is going to play for this advantage? We've got uh, both both camps spawning at the same time, the soul and the baron. The baron is the bit better prize out of these. You can use baron to give yourself a dominant map state and use that to win on the elder. See whether or not we get a full engage here. Control wards placed right away to play for this vision. Aatrox just shedding off the uh, Ash Arrow like it's nothing. So must have must have multiple lines of tenacity in the build, plus the Merc Treads. I barely got hit by that. By using the knockup, can they consolidate this kill? Niski's not dealing damage to the Aatrox. Missing the window. Karzi was not either. They're both tunneled on, on Ari, so we end up with split focus. Team fighting is the bane of Western teams. EU way better than NA. But the accuracy of clicks in the middle of team fights and knowing exactly what your target selection is, making sure that everybody is in place, is such a big deal. It looks like the read is, hey, we're going to jump on El Yoya, go for this. El Yoya might, it actually should be willing to int here. Int for the soul would be okay. Other team will go back up. You'll be able to use four people to defend against Baron because you have the shops in place. Uh, ends up not going for it. Now it means that we have problems as enemy teams just going to go straight to Baron. No, they're actually going to recall. Spend their spend their money and then dare you to come to the Baron. I would have preferred this the other way. This seems like a miss. We both could have sent four people over and then sent one to defend, right? Just keep an eye on, on Vi. And then when you spy the Vi, right? And especially with this line of wards that you have here, you'll be able to see her rotating over. Oh, you can see the split focus here, by the way. Up in two different directions. Chinese team just finds a much better spot for themselves. Fight and they're good. Uh, would have preferred to see Aatrox just spy the Vi and then have the four others go and take the Baron. Callista is going to rip through that Baron no matter how you cut it. Uh, you could also send Ari over and to spy it. Aatrox deals a little bit more damage to the buff. And then they could have gotten both. Use the Empowered Recall and, and fight for it. But instead they go for the Dragon and then say, you know what? We've got Dragon for ourselves. We've got 2k in the bank and we're just team fighting better than you we'll see if they're able to dodge Weiwei's taking a bunch of damage here isolated in the baron going to be happy look at how they reposition right they don't let themselves get caught in this corridor with an alistar here you see how they put that control ward down instead he can jump in quick answer it's always about the control wards be willing to int your control wards for the fight i want to see one put into this ward as into this bush as well there we go one gets dropped they had lost vision now enemy team is moving through the vision so we'll see if there's a turnaround if they overcommit, we will, will be able to 
answer. This is gone means that they don't have any sight as they come in and rebound out. Now it's going to be up to execution. Hilly, what are we trying to do here? Headbutt, but nothing else. What? I think w they must have been trying to set up a flank for themselves. Hey, they're going to come in and contest. Hold on, we'll watch the rest of the fight. Cassanta using his W, one of the best abilities against Aatrox. Beautiful target selection. You have to finish light. He gets resurrected. Chasey, perhaps not realizing, thinking that, oh, wait, the only way that this guy's going to come back to life is if uh, we don't just burst him down here. Ends up dying anyways. Chasey absolutely needed that, that all out to be targeted on one of the other champions. Uh, you want the GA to be respawning right there in the middle of your team. You want to peel the rest of the team and isolate for 1v1 against something like an Ari, right? In this case, you know, with the ultimate up, you're never going to continue that. But Callista was biting the dust. It seems like they panicked, wanted to kill her. She ends up coming back to life with that Guardian Angel. And we see how important that defensive itemization is on that fourth item. You've got enough damage or is in place. Beautiful team fighting as always. We expect this from Chinese teams, especially this team has been team fighting so so well. Uh, we'll see if they keep that up, but they take the lead going into game two. Mm -hmm.